The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. In Lakewood, a while back, there was a vart, there was an engagement party of a bacher, a top bacher, chashev ben Taira, and it was actually to the daughter of a very prestigious Rosh Hashiva. And you know how it is in Lakewood. It's a, there was a lot of people that knew both sides, especially the Rosh Hashiva side. A whole night long, people are coming in, and people are coming out, and people are coming in and coming out. When it was absolutely packed, the place was mobbed, all of a sudden, the grandfather of the chassan gives a clap on the table. He'd ask the son about this. He says, if I can have everyone's attention, I'd like to say something, which, by the way, is very much out of character. No one speaks at a vart of engagement. Like, you come in, you say, Malatel, you take something to eat, maybe you make a l'chaim, and you leave. And he says, uh, I'd like to share a story. Everyone's a little taken aback. A story? It's late. What is this? It's story. Bedtime stories. So I want to tell you the story of a particular child. This child lived in a little town in Europe, a shtetl in Europe, where the houses were made out of wood, as was the base medrash. And there was the guy, you know, the milk man, and there was the shaykhit, and there was the shul, where everyone would learn, and Yaakov, and Mishnai, so it was your typical, you know, idyllic setting of, of a little simple shtetl. The people were poor, the people were simple, but there was a certain ruach of Avodah Hashem. It, says, it, was, it wasn't such a tiny little town, and there was a pretty substantial cheder where all the boys attended. He says there was one boy in this cheder that nowadays he probably would be, you know, would have been diagnosed or would have figured it out, but he couldn't learn. And because he couldn't learn, he was bored. And because he was bored, he did all kinds of mischief and antics. And the Rebbeim suffered, the Manal suffered, the boys suffered. He wasn't a pleasure to have in the yeshiva, but no, they couldn't find it within their heart to throw him out. One morning, um, the boys all get together, and the, rabbi, the Rebbeim, the Anhala come together to Davin Shacharis. And all of a sudden, at some point in Shacharis, they hear strange noises coming from the Aran Kodesh. So the Manal, the principal, goes up to the front to see what's going on. He opens up the curtain, and he opens up the doors, and all of a sudden, a goat jumps out of the Aran Kodesh, a little goat, and it butts him, and it runs him over, and it goes running around, and chaos erupts, and the kids are screaming, and it's crazy. And standing here at the side with his hands folded is this buck, this kid, and he is laughing his heart out. He's the one who took the goat from someone, and he put it into the Aron Kodesh, and it seems like the goat maybe fell asleep, but when it woke up, it wasn't so comfortable, and it was crazy. And later that day, the Rebbeim and the Manal, the principal, got together, and they said, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. It's all over. And they call the boy's parents in, and they tell the boy, I'm sorry, you cannot be in this yeshiva ever again. Goodbye. And the poor boy suddenly hangs his head and he leaves and a few days passes and Yeshiva doesn't hear from him. And all of a sudden one day he's there. And bam, well, he's back. He has no permission. He can't come back to Yeshiva. They send him to the Manal. The Manal says to him, what are you doing here? He says, I decided to come back to Cheder. I'm going to learn today. The Manal said, I'm sorry. No more sorries. It's, he hit the point of no return. It's all over. He ain't coming back. He says, no, I'm not going anywhere. I want to learn. So you don't want to learn. You put, who knows what? What are you going to put in our this time? A chicken? It's not happening. So I'm not leaving. They're like, you have to leave. I'm not leaving. They say, you know, we're going to have to carry you out of here. He says, you can't make a decision to, lot, to, to make me leave and not let me stay. Did you speak to the Rav in the town? You're not the Rav in this town. He's the one that makes all the decisions. And I didn't know what to do. <laughs> he didn't want to physically throw the kid out. On the other hand, he, he told the kid he can't come back, and a word is a word. So he says, fine, I'll. You know what? We'll go to the rough. And this strange sight ensues where the Manal and a few of the Rebbeim, and when well, the kids saw this bunch of kids and this guy, they're all marching towards the rough. They come to the rough. The rough sits them down in his dining room, and the rough says, Okay, what's the issue? What's the dintaira? What's, what's the dialogue here? What's the argument? And the principal says, and the Rebbeim say quite unequivocally, This kid, he hit the point of no return. He put a goat in the Aron Kodesh, such a chil Hashem, such a bezayin, such a chorban, and he wants to come back. I'm sorry. (laughs) What's his next antic? And even if he says he's going to be good, it'll last a day. We've seen this in the past. He cannot come back. And the the Rav hears this, and the Rav turns to the boy, and he says, and what do you say? He says, I I, I realize, you know, I realize how I've fallen, and I I really am going to, I'm going to try hard to, to get myself back together, and every year deserves another chance. The Rav hears both sides, and he doesn't feel that the boy necessarily needs another chance. They've given him ten other chances. When he's about to tell the, the now the principal and the Rebbeim that they shouldn't let him back, the boy says, oh, maybe you should consult with others. So the Rav looks at him, consult with others, what do you mean? And the Rav in the town, I make the decisions here. Who are the others? He says, did you, did you speak to my children? This little 11-year-old boy says. 
Did you speak to my grandchildren? Did you speak to my great-grandchildren? Rav looks at him and says, what do you mean? He goes, you're writing me off and you're taking away my chance to have a Torah education forever. I don't know, I'll go work with the, as a shoemaker and that will be the end of my learning. So what's going to happen? What's my child going to be ready? What's my grandchild going to be? And who knows if my great-grandchildren will be from? Did you consult with them and ask them if they're masking that I should not have the opportunity to learn anymore? Everyone was taken aback. The Rav and the Rebbe and the boy says, give me two more weeks. Give me two weeks to prove myself. If after two weeks anything happens in those two weeks, you can kick me out of yeshiva and I'll never come back and ask. But just, I beg you, two more weeks to try to prove myself. And the Rav was moved by the words of this boy. And the Rav said, okay, you give two more weeks to prove it to the others that you could get it together, that you could learn, that you could grow, and that you could steig. And this grandfather is standing in front of this large vart in Lakewood. He turns to everybody and he says, that boy was me. I was the boy that was tossed out of the yeshiva. I was the boy that put the goat in the Yom Kedush, and I'm not proud of that. And I was the boy that was given two weeks to prove myself to my children and to my grandchildren. He says, I sit here tonight, and I'm at the Zvart, where my Enikul, my grandson, is engaged. He's a Chashav ben Taira, the daughter of a Rosh Hashiva. Rabbi Shalem, to the Rav, and those in the community, Hashem Kem Damam, he says, I think I've proven myself. I've proven to the others that I could do it. Habal Taira Messiah, I say. Sometimes a person has to push very hard. He had to put in those two weeks, and I'm sure they were Gehenim for him. They were difficult, more difficult than anything that he did. But if a person does that, how came talk in Imai? Abelsham brings him up. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.